Airtable Sync is allowing us to break our data up into separate databases, but yet still keep them connected. However, it's not super easy to build automation with this new feature. So if you're interested in learning the ropes, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, check out our website. I will include a link below this video. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It's going to get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into my screen here and start talking about our very specific problem for this video. And it's all about how do you build automation when you're using Airtable Sync? So real quick, let's imagine we just have two really simple databases. My first database is contacts, right? It's pretty standard stuff here. We have a first name, a last name, an email, real basic. Now the second one, the second database is our operations database. And of course, when we have operations in our business, they're going to connect to the people that we do business with, right? Our contacts. So we have this nice little synced table here. This is using Table Sync, Airtable Sync. So if you're not familiar with that, do check out our recent video on that and just kind of get a, an intro on what this is all about. In brief, it's giving us the ability to sync data from that source table. This, that is the contacts database. So we can't actually edit data here. We can't alter it here. All we can do is update the source data and then re-sync it, right? So the problem is, if we are trying to automate any process here, we can't actually affect the data that lives in this operations database without first connecting back to the source table and making the changes there. So let's imagine a scenario where we get an email from somebody that says, hey, uh, I'm ready to move forward, please let's start a project. Well, in our operations database, we would create a new opportunity, most likely. We would say, oh, great, we just heard from this person, and you know, maybe it was Herbert Campbell. And Herbert says, yeah, I'm ready to move forward with a project, project three. So, you know, of course, we would build this linked relationship and get all this going, but what if we want to automate that? How in the world can we do that with using automation to that synced table? Well, as I said, we need to start thinking about mapping it to the source table if we need to make any changes of the data. So if we need to create a new contact or if we need to alter any of the contact information, then of course we need to go back to that, you know, that, that source table in our automation. But then all the other changes have to happen here in this table. So how do we do this? One thing I strongly recommend doing is bringing in the source record ID that lives at the parent table. So again, our parent table in this example is contacts. So we put together inside contacts, we use this record ID formula in order to know what the record ID is for these. When we make any changes to contacts, we have to make it at this level, at the record ID inside of this database. And then we can also bring that in so that we know when we are working in our operations database or the child database, if we're working with a contact, we know what the source record ID is. Now we probably will also need to know what the record ID is for the child. And so in order to get that, of course, we just use that record ID formula again here. So again, we have two record IDs and you'll notice they are different. The record ID here in this database is reflective of what this record is, but this record ID is the ID for the record that lives in the source table. Okay, so jumping back into an automation here, let's say you know some sort of an email came through and what we need to do is first find that user. If we know that the user is already going to exist in our operations database, then it's easy. All we have to do is find them here and we can then link to their record. But what if they aren't going to exist in our database? What if there's a possibility that we have to create them first? Well, in that case, let's talk about that. The first thing we would do after our triggering event, that is the thing that sets the automation into motion, the first thing we need to do is find or create the record at the source level. So jumping in here, we're going to go into our Zapier account and pick our Airtable and we have to find the source table. In this case, it's just called contacts. And 
the source database. And then of course we have to map to that table. And then from here, we need to find whatever it is that we're gonna be searching for this person by. Email tends to be a really good one because email is always unique and always belongs to one person. So we can say, hey, you know, in this example, let's go ahead and pull in some email example. I have a pierce at example.com is the fake email that we are pretending to have received here. And so basically what we're saying is, hey, this email came from step one. We are gonna find or create that person in our contacts database. So again, if you know that it's going to exist already in the synced table, you can skip this part. But if you have to create it sometimes, then we need to do this find or create. And so in this case, we would bring in the name and I'll just type in an example name here. And we would have to bring in that email address. And this is you know, pretty standard stuff, find or create this contact. Now, we're gonna see if we can find them. Let's go ahead and, and uh, do a test here. And of course, we will be able to find this particular uh, individual because they already exist in that database. But if we didn't have them, then we would create them. Now again, the, the next step is, all right, so now we know who that contact is, but we need to then find the related contact in our contacts database. Remember, this is more like a, a mirror or a window to that source table. And so this has its own unique ID. So now that we've found or created the source data, now we need to go in and first things first, set a delay. Now the reason I set a delay here is because I've noticed that it takes approximately five minutes sometimes for data to sync from a source table over to our, you know, our windows or our child tables. So I like to do a delay on my automation here for about 10 minutes just to buy myself some extra time. You probably don't need to go this long, but I prefer to go longer and err on the side of caution. So this would then, in the course of this automation, it would wait for 10 minutes before moving on. And now what we need to do again is we need to find that record in Airtable in our child database. So remember, we created, found or created the record at the contacts database, the source level. Now we need to do it at the operations database or the child level. So we need to find that record. And so let's find it. And what we can use here, let's go ahead and first sync up to our proper database. This is our operations database. And so what we're doing is we're looking for that contact at the contact table. So that's our synced table now. So what we need to do here is find our synced record inside of our child database. So we are going to be looking for the, the uh, source record ID. So remember, we have two record ID fields. Let me flip back over. We have the source record ID in operations and we have the child record ID, but I don't know the child record ID yet. All I know is the source. So I'm gonna look in this field and I'm using the record ID that we found in step two. So let's go ahead and run this. Now, of course, we don't need to create it if it doesn't already exist because we cannot create records at the child sync. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue here and let's test it and cross our fingers. There we go, we got the green light. So it was able to locate the synced copy of the contact. Now that we know that record ID, we can finish up our automation. So perhaps in our example, we're gonna say that the final step here is to create an opportunity. So let's go ahead and create a new record in our opportunities. So this again, just mapping out to our operations database. And for the table, now we're going to create a record at the opportunities level. And we are able to put whatever we want in for the project type, maybe this is type four. And this is where we're gonna now use the connection to the contact. But again, remember, now we're in the child database, so we need to use the child record ID. That is the record ID that we found in step four. So as you can see, there are definitely a lot of different steps to automating with your synced tables. So now we have a, a, the output of that automation where it properly linked to Pierce Perez. So the, the most important takeaway here is we can't alter data at the child level. We have to go in deep, 
find the source of that data, make the changes or create records there, wait for the sync to catch up, and then we can start automating again in our child database. Hope this made a lot of sense, but if you have any questions, do post them below and let me know if you guys have any awesome ideas for upcoming videos. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.